Welcome to yet another video on deferred tax, which is going to tackle the same scenario as we did in the previous one. But this time I want to show you the financial reporting, the full financial report consequences of uh, recording a deferred tax liability. In the previous um, video, we established that the correct answer to this uh, question is answer B, 3.6 million and a deferred tax liability. So we're not solving this question. I'm just, I just have it up for, um, for, um, for the purposes of using data. Uh, we know the answer. Now I want to explore what happens in the balance sheet and income statement. But also before that, let's take it one step forward and see what will happen in the next year. Because with deferred tax, it's always important to recognize the whole, the bigger picture, which is also what happens in the subsequent period. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, keep watching and let's get solving. Okay, I'm going to write over here 2023 financial performance. Um, and even though we are not told what happens in 2023 to fictitious AG, it's not part of the question as such, I'm going to pretend that the company will still report the same amount of earnings um, before tax, the 16 million, as it did in, as it did in the previous year. So, um, assuming this also carries forward to 2023 also. Now, we will be analysing this performance um, from a from an income statement perspective, just like before, but also a tax return perspective. And um, if we've got earnings before taxes of 16 million, let me put this down, earnings before taxes, but I'm also going to assume it's earning before taxes and amortization of 16, um, which are also going to impact our tax return. I, you know, I wanted to make this before amortization because I was waiting for the amortization component to come into my income statement computation in the year 2023, because this is when we are using the acquired license, we're getting the benefits of it. And that's when we should also amortize it. So there's going to be a 12 million amortization expense or charge in the income statement. And now, you know, after this, we will have the proper earnings before taxes, realistically, of 4 million. From a tax return perspective, there will be no amortization expense or charge because amortization has already been computed and deducted in the year 2022, the year of purchase. That's what we did in the previous video. So our tax computation will simply be based on this 16 million times 30, and this is 1.6 times three, so 4.8 million payable to the tax office. Good. How do we deal with this? Well, from a tax income statement perspective, our income tax expense line, as you know, is composed of two things. We've got current tax, which is supposed to match whatever we're paying to the tax office or have to pay 4.8. But we also have deferred tax. And if you recall in the previous video, I said the whole purpose of deferred tax in this scenario is to, well, defer or delay the recognition of the benefit, the tax benefit. Even though we get the benefit in the year 2022, because that's when we fully amortize the license purchase, and that's when we really pay less tax, I thought, or I said, it's a good idea to wait with that recognition until the year 2023 from an income statement perspective, because that's when we include the relevant amortization charge. And if you include amortization in the 2023 uh, income statement, why not also have its direct consequence, which is the um, tax saving? So this is the moment to recognize the tax saving, the fact, hey, we're saving on tax because of this amortization. And it will, it will come here. The tax saving was 3.6. And because it's a saving, it's the opposite of an expense. So I'm going to make this negative. 
making the overall tax expense equal 4.8 minus 3.6, 1.2. Therefore, our net profit for the period is going to be 4 of earnings before tax less 1.2 um, of tax expense, which obviously gives just 2.8 million of net profit. And in line with what I've been doing so far in all of the videos, I guess, I want to compute the effective tax rate. So the comparison or the relation of uh, the reported tax expense 1.2 and whatever was our EBT, and that was 4. So let me fire up the calculator here on my uh, phone. 1.2 divided by 4, 0.3 or 30% again. So the whole, as you can see, the whole effect of doing this has been to once again equate the uh, tax expense with what would happen if you simply charged 30% the statutory tax rate to EBT. To get the bigger picture of this, I want to do a table similar to the one I did for the previous scenario and a table in which I'm going to have two uh, columns, one for 2022, the other for 2023, and just show you, um, I guess, the same items or similar items to the one I had before. First of all, we're going to have earnings before tax here. And earnings before tax in the 2023 income statement were four. However, in the previous year, that was 2022, because we didn't have any deduction for amortization, earnings before tax were 16. However, what happened from a tax perspective was that we computed tax payable, which we also present as current tax, on the basis of what happens in the tax return. And over here, tax payable is a very big 4.8. Whereas in the previous year, it was a relatively small um, 1.2. Now, it was 1.2 in 2022 because we could make a deduction for the purchase of a license in the year of its purchase. And that caused tax to be quite low, the tax expense or the tax payable to be quite low because of that tax saving. However, this approach to computing tax doesn't really go in line. It doesn't really match from a timing perspective how we recognize amortization and therefore earnings before tax in our income statement. It's misaligned. So the role of deferred tax is to make certain adjustments, which are only going to be temporary. In the previous video, we said the 2022 income statement should additionally be loaded or hit with deferred, a deferred tax expense of 3.6. And this brings the whole tax payable uh, composed of current and deferred tax to an overall expense of 4.8, which is going to make it aligned with our EBT, accounting EBT, because that's 30% of it. In the subsequent year, in 2023, that is reversed. So, well, we reduce tax payable, which is right now loaded with quite a lot of current tax by 3.6. And this brings the overall tax payable amount to just 1.2, like we had over here, or not tax payable, the tax expense, sorry. But once again, that is perfectly in line with the fact that we've got a 30% statutory tax rate and 4 million of earnings before tax. So loading tax expense with an additional charge and then offloading it just to create a temporary shift, so to speak. Let's analyze this from a balance sheet and income statement perspective now. Okay, let's explore how this whole scenario that we've been analyzing with even an additional year of hypothetical data 
would play out in terms of a balance sheet and income statement. So in the year 2022, over here within assets, I would like to record the fact that we spend cash and more specifically, we spend 1. Point, no, 1. 1.2, 12 million of cash to acquire an intangible asset. So intangible assets up here, that's the license. So um, 12. And uh, that's pretty much the only thing that happens in 2022. There isn't any amortization of the license yet. It will only happen in the subsequent year. But our company obviously um, computes its tax payable. And remember, our tax payable for the year 2022 was quite low because we could treat this 12 million as a one-time tax deductible expense in the year of acquisition. So we base the tax computation on 16 million of earnings before uh, or taxable income, 16 minus 12, 4 uh, million of taxable income times a tax rate of 30% leading us to record income tax payable of 1.2 over here. And this also entered the PL as something called current tax. So the current tax for the year um, one, uh, 2022 was 1.2, this obviously having a pronounced effect on, a very obvious effect on our net profit for the period. So net profit down by 1.2 or as a result of charging this to PNL. And, you know, I'm going to say this again, whatever you do in terms of your net profit, it's going to affect your um, equity position. And obviously, more specifically, our retained earnings. So if we charge something negative to um, an expense to uh, our PNL, it impacts net profit and it creates a drag on equity of 1.2. And this is how you balance the 1.2 income tax payable with um, appearing within liabilities with a corresponding uh, downward impact on equity. However, I also said that this current tax should be supplemented with deferred tax because I wanted to weight with the recognition of the benefit associated with the amortization of the license until the time when we actually start to amortize it for financial reporting purposes, which is not the year 2022, it was the year 2023. And I said, okay, let's load the tax expense, and the tax expense being these two items combined, with an additional 3.6 which is kind of removing the effect of the tax, tax saving from the year 2022. And this, once again, has a negative impact on net profit. So same direction, down 3.6. And if that's the case, it also has a negative impact on our, sorry, over here, maybe over here, uh, retained earnings 3.6 down. And that will naturally only be offset from a balance sheet balancing perspective let me use a different color this 3.6 will not distort the balance of the balance sheet if at the same time i create a deferred tax payable uh, or a deferred tax uh, maybe liability of 3.6 down here it can't be an asset because an asset would grow over here, and this is a downward 3.6. So this is what happens in 2022. Now, in the subsequent year, what will happen is the following. We will, uh, for sure, probably have settled our um, income tax payable from the previous year. So um, let's just very quickly show that this... Uh, let me use the... Uh, yellow color that we pay this off 1.2 I guess and cash therefore disappears that's a simple entry it doesn't cause anything to happen in the income statement however we do in the year 2023 carry out the full amortization of the intangible asset of the license so 12 million down for financial reporting purposes and uh, 
that obviously is something that w that will make its way to the uh, to the to the income statement. Now I didn't really leave enough space here, so maybe let me just try to squeeze this here somewhere at the top. I'm going to say amortization. Apologies for not necessarily anticipating the fact that we would need uh, this item here. So amortization of twelve million, and it's a big item, but I'm. Unfortunately, I don't have much space, so I'm including it as a cost over here, 12. And now the uh, tax consequences of all of this. This amortization has no impact on the tax computation and the tax computed in respect of 2023 under certain assumptions regarding the continuation of performance um, in terms of taxable income as before. This will current tax will be a pretty high uh, 4.8. Despite the fact that we've got a very big expense sitting in our PL in the financial reports. And now the whole idea of the deferred tax was to say, well, we have just temporarily loaded our tax expense with deferred tax. Now let's reverse the effect. Before I do that, let me very quickly just say. If we charge amortization here to net profit, uh, to PNL, it's going to have an impact on our net profit downwards. And if that's the case, it will also have this impact on our equity. So as you can see, amortization charge to intangible asset has the effect of lowering equity as well. If we are charging a fresh portion of current tax here, that has the effect of dampening our uh, net profit. Once again, that spills over to our um, to our uh, retained uh, retained earnings, doesn't it? So this four point eight creates a drag also on equity, just like we did before. But what we will do now is reverse this deferred tax liability, so make it disappear it was only temporarily here and when you decrease the value of a liability make it disappear that's something positive from a from the perspective of your income statement and i'm going to show this in brackets as the opposite of an expense so 3.6 but in brackets meaning a negative expense or the opposite of an expense and let me use the color green in this case this has a an absolutely positive effect on our net profit, that positive effect will also enter equity. So equity up, deferred tax liability down. Essentially, this was only done, let me stress once again, temporarily to make tax expense higher than it would have been otherwise and allow it to be lower in the next period so as to match when we actually the period when we actually recognize amortization for financial reporting purposes to have those you know to have amortization and its tax consequence appearing in the same period 2023